Hi Converge Nation, Cassie here with your upcoming news for March. We've been talking about our digital discipleship, and it's time to go from social media to social ministry. On March 1st, we'll be launching our Facebook groups for Converge Men, Converge Her, Converge Young Adults, Converge Students, and Converge Kids. So if you've been plugged in with us before or you want to get plugged in with us now, make sure to accept the invitation to the group or reach out and let us know which one you want to be involved in. We'll also be launching our six-week learning units on March 17th. We look forward to staying connected and growing with each one of you. Hey Converge family, some exciting news. We have new Converge merchandise. Go over to our e-store and check out our new gear, including a retro Love God, Love People tee, a Jesus Over Everything sweatshirt, our 10th anniversary commemorative tee, and a Jesus Greater Than Me t-shirt. The new merch and other Converge branded items can be ordered by emailing merch at weareconverge.com. During the month of March, we have a lot of exciting events as we celebrate our 10th anniversary as a church and one year as Converge Church. The sermon series will highlight our 2021 theme of being a banner year better decisions, better outcomes, and fewer regrets. To help us celebrate, we have an awesome lineup of some highly requested guest speakers. Some of you could have faced the prison of a, of a bad mistake. There is life after your mistakes. There is a future beyond your failures. So get up. He said, get ready. Get going. The force that is working in you is greater than the force that's working against you. Hi, Converse Church. My name is Pastor Pushy, and I'm so excited to be joining you for your 10th anniversary. Woo-hoo! So join me on the 21st of March. I have a word for you. Listen, if you plan to do anything significant, then this is for you. This is a word that blessed me and I know it's going to bless you. I'll see you soon. God bless. Joseph said, Joseph told his brothers, don't, don't think ill of yourself for God sent me here in advance to preserve life. So everything I went through was transportation to get me to my destination. So most of us are spending time casting and binding the affliction without knowing affliction is actually transportation to your destination. We look forward to celebrating this exciting church milestone and a great upcoming banner year with you. Hey there, Converge Nation. We are super excited about March Madness, not only because we have an amazing lineup of guest speakers, but we're equally as excited because we get to fulfill a Vision Sunday 2021 promise and that is our Digital Discipleship Initiative. We're going to be intentional this month about moving from social media to social ministry. And to help us a little, understand a little bit better what that means, I've invited our very own Dexter and Andrea Jackson. They're no strangers to Converge Nation. They serve as our e-campus directors here at Converge. And they're going to tell us how you can connect in community virtually while growing spiritually. So for someone hearing about the Digital Discipleship Initiative for the first time, Dexter, where do they start? I need you to start by finding us on Facebook. Connect with us on Facebook. When you find us on Facebook, I need you to find and like the Converge Church page. But that information will be at the bottom of the screen. That's how they're going to do it, Pastor Ray. All right, fantastic. All right, for someone out there, and this is, again, this first time, I want to give you step-by-step -step instructions. Andrea, uh, what options do people have, right? Because people have different needs, all right? They might uh, be in a different season of life, and we want to make sure that what we do digitally through our Digital Discipleship Initiative is relevant and meets people right where they are. So, Andrea, what can people expect? So the next thing we need you guys to do is join one of our many Facebook groups. And we've got groups for everyone. We've got Converge Men, Converge Her for our women, Converge Young Adults, Converge Students, Converge Kids, and for those of you who are new to our virtual family, we've got Converge 101. 
So these groups are going to be the place where we will engage and connect in authentic community, where we will grow and go together spiritually, and where we will celebrate and support one another. So we need you to connect with the group today. Awesome. Now, check this out. From what I understand, there's levels to this, right? It's so you join the group, uh, or, or you, you find us on Facebook, you, you join a group, uh, we partner, and here's why this next level is important. We partner with an outstanding organization called Right Now Media. They have developed relevant biblical content that we're going to be using. Now, in order for people to access that content that we're going to be using during these learning units, uh, we need some information from them. Andrea, tell us a little bit about what we need for them, from them, in order to access the content. So we need you guys to shoot us your email address. And you can do that one of two ways. You can DM us on our Converge Church Facebook page, or you can email us directly at echurch at weareconverged.com. Having this information is going to be helpful as we prepare to kick off the spring semester of our virtual Bible study. Awesome. Now, uh, there's something they need to be aware of because they could get the, the email from Right Now Media. If they don't see it right away, Dexter, where do they need to go? Check your spam folder. You know that spam folder where we get all the stuff that we may not want? You definitely want this week from right now. Media. So they go to the spam folder or the inbox, they see the link, they click the link, and what happens after that? After that, they'll click the link and be able to create an account. So you'll go ahead and create your account, and creating this account is what will enable you to access all of the amazing Bible study content that we'll have for you. Fantastic. Now, before we wrap up, uh, Dexter, I know you have this major concern for our Converge family. Tell us a little bit about that. I don't want you to get FOMO. Please don't get FOMO. I do not want you to miss out. So I really need you to get that right now media link, create your account, and please join us virtually. We got, I'm super excited for the great times that we have ahead as we connect virtually in community. Awesome. Now, I know, guys, we're hyping this thing up, but sometimes people want to know right, what they're getting into. And I think you guys have prepared something that will kind of give us an idea of what people can expect starting next, well, starting this month. Absolutely. We need you guys to check out these exciting trailers so that you have a preview of what's to come in the month ahead. If you're a parent, my guess is you've thought about what it's going to be like when your child leaves home one day. And if you're like me, I bet that thought was immediately followed by a hundred more, like, what kind of person will he become? And have I been a good enough parent? Or have I just been the inspiration for his future therapy? I mean, if we were ever given an owner's manual with instructions on how to raise kids, that would make it so much easier. Instead, it feels more like you stumbled into advanced neuroscience when you thought you'd signed up for home ec. Uh, let's face it, raising kids in today's crazy culture is a very difficult challenge. You start off with the best intentions, but at some point you realize you're just duct taping each day to the next, hoping everything will stick together long enough to keep them alive until they leave home. Yet deep down we wonder, is this really the best we have to offer our kids? No one will deny that we live in a very, very challenging world. Everything in our life and everything in our sphere is going to go through shifts and changes. And one of the challenges of living on planet Earth is how are we going to respond? I wasn't pretty enough or talented enough or social enough, things that just made me get made fun of. Everybody saw this well-behaved Christian kid at church, and they had no idea that when I went home, it was a different person. When I was eight years old, my mom passed away. When I was nine, the police came, and they like took us to foster care. Religion is for people who want to feel good about themselves. You know, I thought it was silly. Sometimes I evaluate, why am I still believing in God? Why is he not there present now? 
dad actually died. He uh, committed suicide. It was rough. Um, our family uh, took it real hard. The issue is the posture of your heart. Your heart and my heart needs to be a heart that's postured for bowing in our everyday lives, bowing to Christ at school, bowing to Christ in the gatherings, bowing to Christ in how you use your computer, bowing to Christ on every single level of your life. I knew that if I was going to do music for his glory, I would really have to be serious about him. At this point, I have a decision to make. Am I going to keep running with the world and the things that the world tell me to run after or be a follower of Christ? Let's make a decision to not be stagnant youth. Christ didn't save you to be stagnant. He saved you to be a beast for him. What's your what if? If you stop and think about it, everything begins with if. One little if can change everything. One little if can change anything. If God is for us, then who can be against us? And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I have a simple theory. It's bold predictions backed up by bold actions that changes the course of history, that changes the trajectory of our lives. You were once an idea in the mind of Almighty God. You are God's what if. So here's the question. What's your what if? What is your one God idea? What's your God-sized dream or your God-ordained passion? God is ordering your footsteps. He's preparing good works in advance, and the God who began a good work in you, He will carry it to completion. Our only regrets at the end of our lives will be the time, the talent, and the treasure that we left on the table, that we didn't give back to God. Those will be the if-onlys that will haunt us to the grave and beyond. I'm convinced of this. When everything is said and done, all that matters is hearing God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Friendship is meant to help us complete this race. Yeah. It's meant to hold us up when we want to fall. It's meant to be the prayers we can't pray when we're in the midst of a diagnosis we hate. It's meant to be this sweet sisterhood that laughs together. It's meant to be this firm, steady thing in a world that is not steady. The air that we breathe in our culture right now is to go alone, isolate. To see them fully as they are. Like, that's a part of being a good friend. We were built to work together for a great, incredible purpose. That girl was persistent, and she, she just felt that the Lord was saying, you two need to be friends. Boundaries has been a difficult thing. Um, but thank God for therapy. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you go deep with a friend and it's almost like you've reached this level where you just recognize all of these things about yourself, about them, and then it becomes almost uncomfortable. I feel so betrayed, but I, I mean, she's my best friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Less alone. I think we all crave those words, but it does feel really difficult, doesn't it? A friend who really loves you can hear you communicate what hurt you, what made you angry. That's loving. Which just takes so much bravery to have these conversations, right? Yeah. It's brave. And it's worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. Some people know God only philosophically. He's a concept. Other people know God informationally. But God is after so much more than that. All through the Bible, the one ingredient you need if you're serious about getting to know God is a passion for it. You gotta want it. 
If you don't know God, if you're not pursuing the knowledge of God, that means your life is not being lived for the purpose you were created. We regularly hear people say, well, I want to know God's will for my life who aren't pursuing the person of God. Don't go looking for the plan, look for the planner. And the Holy Spirit's job is to turn up the light so that you see God more clearly and experience Him more personally. When you are growing in your knowledge of God, the life of Christ is going to be reproduced in you. The Bible calls it the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. Your God who wants to get to know you will use a crisis for deliverance so that you get to see Him and so that you understand that His wisdom is greater than your knowledge. I want you to come out of this series with a fire that says to God, I want to know you. I want to draw near to you. I want to experience you. I want to abide with you. I want to get close to you. I want to fulfill the purpose that you have. I want to hear from you.
Hello, Converge Nation. Can you believe it? We are actually going to have Anthony Evans in the flesh helping us to celebrate a night of worship for our 10th anniversary. You can go to in person at weareconverge.com to register today. You do not want to miss the night of worship with, again, our special guest, Anthony Evans. Along with Anthony Evans, we will also have a commemorative custom-made gift box. This is no cardboard ordinary box. You'll actually be able to keep this box for all of your special treasures after the anniversary and beyond. So you see we have our custom V on the top. If you open up the box and it does have a magnetic tab, inside you see that we have custom Converge coasters marble coasters for your home. We have a custom dish towel in honor of our very own pastor since the beginning. He's always said this church is a church where everybody does the dishes. So we have a custom made dish towel that says everybody does the dishes. Parents, you can pass these on to your teenagers and just tell them that the Lord sent them a word. <laughs> anyway, we have some apple cider, non-alcoholic communion for you. We have custom made Converge glasses to celebrate the anniversary with us. We also have custom Converge coasters for your car. You can take Converge everywhere with you. And then, as you see, I have on our custom t-shirt. Our t-shirt comes in black. It also will come in gray and in the teal color. And you can go to merch at weareconverge.com to order your custom anniversary box and additional t-shirts. Now, here's the deal. Lean in a little close. You know I love you, but you cannot get the t-shirt without the box. Mm -hmm. I said it, because that's my business. You cannot order your t-shirt without your box. Once you order your box, you can order additional t-shirts for your neighbors, your cousins, your friends, your children, but you must order the box. You can order the box with single items or double items, that's how they come. But anyway, you can email all of your questions to merch at weareconverged.com. You'll be able to order the box, and the additional t-shirts if you would like. We have some other merchandise on there. You can just stock up for Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthday, 4th of July, Easter, whatever you wanna get ready for, buy your merch. We love you so much. Thank you for celebrating with us. But without further ado, okay, sit back up. We leaned in, so sit up. Honey, get ready. Y'all get ready because we have coming to our screens all the way from South Africa, none other than Pastor Pushy Watson. She's our cousin, but she's your friend. This is a dynamic powerhouse preaching woman machine. Get your notebooks, get your pens, get your Bibles, and be ready. Coming to our screens is the beautiful, powerful Pastor Pushy Watson. You're going to enjoy this. Hi, Carl. 
Converge family, thank you so much for the opportunity to join you today and speak to you. And congratulations on 10 great faithful years of the Lord. I trust today that you are going to be blessed. My name is Pastor Pushy and I'm so honored to be with you. So let's get straight into it. Today I am speaking from Acts 27 and I'm starting at verse 15. It says, the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. Verse 18 says, We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Jump down to verse 42. It says, The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Father, I thank you for your word that does not return to you void. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that your word accomplishes that which you intend and purpose. Father, I pray now that you will use me as a ready vessel. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint my tongue, that you will anoint my mind. Lord, I pray that you will unite hearer and speaker alike. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will speak to me, to speak through me, to speak into the hearts of your people. Father, I thank you that it will not be flesh, it will not be me speaking, but that there will be an anointing anointing upon your word because it is your word that goes forth and breaks the yokes. I thank you heavenly father that my tongue will be like that of a ready writer, ready to speak the oracles of God inscribed upon the hearts of your people. And now, Lord, as I begin to open up my mouth, I pray that you will boldly, articulately, wisdom, anointing, I pray that you speak things that my mind had no comprehension of, that you speak words that will break yokes and remove burdens, that they will be hearing one way, but each one will hear in the language of their own understanding in the language of their own situation. Speak to every issue, Heavenly Father. Set people free today. Give them wisdom, uncommon direction. I thank you for it, Lord Jesus. I pray that it will not be just another sermon, not a, another scripture, not just another passage, but Lord, and not just a message, but it will be a life-changing, impacting, spirit-driven word that will change the directory of their life in Jesus' mighty name. And somebody said, Amen. You see, uh, the Bible says that Saul had made it his mission to persecute the Christians. He, he thought he was doing the right thing. That was his passion. He was going from place to place, persecuting Christians. And he did not discriminate against men, women, children, anywhere he found them. He would beat them up. He would arrest them. He'd put them in prison. He made it a point to attack the Christians. He saw to their stoning and their imprisonment. And he went from city to city carrying out this mission. And one day when he was on the road to Damascus, to carry out another mission, to attack another innocent Christian, the Lord appeared to him and threw him off the donkey and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He says, who are you, Lord, that I am persecuting? And what I want to say to you is this. God takes your persecutions personally. God takes your pain personally. He says, touch not the apple of my eye. Do my servant no harm. When he touches you, when someone touches you, when the enemy attacks you, they attack God. He is the defender. He is the avenger. He says, you are persecuting me. Who you are attacking is not against them. It's against me because you're attacking them because they belong to me. In other words, you're attacking me. And it says that the Lord leads him to Ananias. And he, the Lord says to Ananias, I'm sending somebody to you. I want you to restore their sight. This person that is coming, he doesn't say, 
this is who I'm sending to you. Because when, when Saul comes, Ananias is like, but Lord, this person you're sending, this, this Saul is the same one that is killing Christians. How can you send this person to me? What? He's thinking about his own situation, but this is how good God is. This is the grace of God that, you know, mercy is able to help the enemies. Mercy is able to help people who were hurting you. That when the grace of God comes upon you, it is so strong that you can actually be a blessing to those that wanted to curse you. The Lord says, I am sending the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear his words. He's saying that Saul, I've chosen you. Rest he says, restore his sight. He's blind. I've knocked him off his donkey. I've revealed myself to him. I want you, I re revealed myself to him spiritually. Now I want you to restore his sight in the natural. I've spoken to him. I've, I've, I've opened his spiritual eyes to show who I am. But now I want you to open his natural eyes. He says, I have chosen him. You know what? One thing you need to know is that God has chosen you. Many are called, but few are chosen. You need to be confident. You need to be convinced that I am chosen. No matter what you go through, you need to know that you are chosen. When you are blind, you must know you are chosen. When you've been knocked down, you must know that you are chosen. When you're going through a storm, you must know that you are chosen. When, when Paul now finds himself, because the Lord changes his name from Saul to Paul, he gives him a new name. He gives him a new direction. He gives me, him a new purpose. And he gives his name new meaning. And, and, and when God chooses you, no matter what you go through you must know that you're going through chosen so when paul is now when saul is now paul and he's stuck in a storm he needs to know that he's chosen let me tell you something there's a time we we're flying overseas and we were in business class and um it was one of those planes that are separated the top deck the first class is separated from the rest of the plane and you would think that this is privilege so there was a crack in the door, apparently, in the first class. Because suddenly there was a loud, when we were very, very, at very high extreme temperature. At, at, at very high, uh, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> elevation. When we're very high. So now the, 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 there was a crack. There was a crack in the door. And, and because we were so high, that crack started to, to get loud. Everybody in first class could hear like a whistling sound. It was so piercingly loud. And we wondered, what is that sound? Where is that sound coming from? And we saw the stewardesses going to check this sound and where it was coming from. And they realized it's coming from a crack in the door. If that crack, if the pressure in the plane becomes so yes high altitude that's the word i was looking for altitude if that crack becomes exposed greater we are all gone the next thing the pilots come out you know when the pilots come you know you know you're in a situation like dudes can you guys just forget about this and go back in there and at least try to steer us in the right direction or drop the altitude a little bit or do something the pilots have left now we are in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> this is how you know that the Lord is carrying this plane. And the people, the person I was traveling with, everybody was panicking. And they were so fearful. And I think we probably had maybe a couple of hours left before we were anywhere near our destination. And that sound was so loud. Everybody stayed frantic, fearful, and awake. Listen. I took my heels off, put the blanket over my head, and I slept. And I had a peaceful sleep. And when I woke up, I was asked, how can you sleep in a situation like this? But let me tell you my secret. I know that I'm chosen. 
I know that I know that I know that I know in my Noah. I know what God has said concerning my life. I know what God has told me. I know the prophecies over my life. I know the word that has been spoken. And God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He does not change his mind. What he has said concerning me and you, he shall be faithful to perform it. And all the things that God has said to me, none of them had yet happened. So I was confident that I cannot die. I knew it's not my time. I don't care what happens with this plane. But as for me, I will not die because I have not achieved. I have not seen what God says. He said, I have chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear if I know the will of God for my life. If I see his righteousness, if I hear his words, I know that I'm chosen. It's not this this plane crash is not my portion. It's not my time. Tell somebody, tell somebody. I don't know who's next to you. I don't know if you're with yourself, but just say I'm chosen. I am chosen. I am so chosen from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I am chosen and ain't nothing no devil in hell can do about it. No storm can stop me. No crack in the window can stop me. No attack can stop me because I am chosen. The Bible says that after this, Paul became an advocate for Christ. You know, when you're convinced, nobody has to tell you whether God is real or not. No, you, you don't even feel like explaining yourself just out of obedience. You will say, this is my testimony. But when you have been through a test, when you have been through a situation that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side... Where would I have been? When you've been through something where if it was not for God, but for the Lord, only God could have brought me out of this. You know deep within yourself that there is a God. That God is real. He became such an advocate for Christ. As strong as he was against Christ is as powerful as he became for Christ. God will turn it around. I want to speak to somebody that is worried about another person. Maybe you're worried about your child. Maybe you're worried about your spouse. Your spouse. God is able to turn it around in the name of Jesus. And this is the strange thing. Now that he became an advocate for Christ, the Jews, the same Jews wanted him dead. Do you know, here we find him now. He's a prisoner. He's on his way to Italy to stand trial before Caesar because they wanted him dead. You know, it's tempting to think, maybe God is punishing me for what I used to do. Maybe this is the consequence. The world will say it's karma. You know, this is the consequence of, of, of what I did to others because now what he used to do to others is now being done to him. The same way he was persecuting and imprisoning the Christians. Now he's being persecuted. He's being sought after. They want him dead. Now they want to imprison him. And this is what confuses us. Because when, when Saul was living wrong, nobody wanted him dead. No one was after him when he was living in sin. But now that he's living right, now that you became a Christian, now that you decided to commit your life to Christ, all hell is broken loose. And people can't figure out that how is it that when I was dealing drugs, when I was in the clubs, when I was lying under everything that could move, I, 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 I didn't have any problems. But the minute I walked away from the life of sin, that is when I started to have encounters of attacks. How is it that the drug dealer is living well but the Christian is crying? When you're doing the right thing and the wrong thing is happening to you and there's a temptation to think that that when life is quiet, that means that God is consenting. You know, people people think, you know, but eh, 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 they don't realize that Satan is not attacking those who steal, kill, and destroy. Because they're helping his agenda. They, they don't know it, but they're working for free for him. The murderer is not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Silence is not the approval of God. Neither is attack indicative of the judgment of God actually is quite the opposite because if God wanted him dead 
He would have killed him on the road of Damascus. There would have been no need to restore his sight. The fact that God restored your sight, the fact that you survived the storm, the fact that you survived the car accident. Oh, there were plenty of opportunities where Satan had you. There were plenty of times when it could have been the end of you. The fact that you got healed from that sickness. The fact that you made it when people around you died from less than what you survived. The fact that you recovered all. The fact that you, you, you got another job. God has restored your sight. I want to tell somebody that God has preserved you on purpose for your purpose. It is not over. The reason you've got your sight, you might not have a lot left after the pandemic. You might have lost some stuff in COVID, but the Lord told me to tell you the fact that you still have your sight. Oh, that means God is not finished with you yet. I want to tell somebody that now that Paul has given his life to the Lord, now that he's going around preaching, now that he's turned his life around, he's finding himself in prison, persecuted, attacked, and headed to trial. And you might be tempted to think that this is a result of something that I've done wrong. But I want to tell you, it is the result of everything that you have done right. I want to speak to somebody who's facing persecution. Somebody who's now trapped in a storm, escaping a problem on this side, and headed to a prison on the other side. And you're wondering, even if I go back, I've got problems. In the middle, I'm in a storm. And when I get there, there's nothing good waiting on the other side. I don't have any hope of what's coming next. I don't know what's coming in the future. The Bible says they were stuck in a storm that they didn't create. Have you ever been stuck in something? This COVID-19, this pandemic, something that you had no control over. It says the wind were against them. It would not allow us to hold our cause. It was a wind of hurricane force. It's not that you're being dramatic. It's not that you're intimidated. People think, oh, if you're a Christian, you must not be af afraid. But this is a wind of hurricane force. It says they were caught. They didn't have a choice. They couldn't just escape. They were caught in the storm, driven along. It says such a violent battering. And they threw the cargo overboard. Then they threw the ship's tackle overboard. Then they threw the grain overboard. It has been loss after loss after loss. It's not one thing, it's another thing. Just when you thought this would be okay, then something else happened. Just when you thought you finished dealing with this, then you had to deal with that. Have you ever been stuck in a storm that you have no control over? Something that you never saw coming. The whole world is wondering what's going on. You come through your past in retrospect. That maybe, maybe if I had done this. Maybe if I had gone there. Maybe if I had waited. Maybe if I had taken another route. And regardless of your thoughts, you find yourself in a situation over which you have no power. Have you ever been powerless? Have you, have you ever been stuck in a storm? A wind, a virus raging out of control against you, costing you loss after loss. The tackle, the cargo, the grain, the relationship, the finance, the job, the marriage, loss upon loss after loss, lasting, lasting way longer. Nobody thought that by now we'd still be in this storm. Nobody thought that by now we'd still be in a situation. I don't care what they decide. I don't care whether everybody takes their mask off. We, we all know that it's not, it's not over yet. It, it, it's not over just yet. We're, we're still in a storm. We're still in a situation. What do you do? When the storm has lasted longer than you expected. It says two weeks later, when neither sun, after days of no moon, no stars, no food, the Bible says they lost all hope. Now you can go a few days without food. You can go even less without water. But you cannot go one minute without hope. And the Bible says they had lost all hope. Have you lost all hope? Have you lost hope? I, 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 I know you lost a lot. And, 
I am not in denial of the situation, but, but Paul says, keep the courage. You see what people don't realize is when, when the Lord says, when the Bible says, keep the courage, that means you're going to need it. <laughs> I don't care how super spiritual you are. When the word says, hold on to your courage, when the Bible, every time you read, be courageous, that is God saying there is something coming for which you're going to need your courage. Don't get discouraged. Oftentimes, pastors, preachers, their attacks that we go under, we, we encourage others. But while we give you our courage, we often go away discouraged courage while we lend you courage while we encourage you we leave empty and encouraged many times and we have to strengthen ourselves in the lord and paul says keep the courage keep the courage don't give all your courage away to fear you you might have lost the job but keep the courage you might have lost the marriage uh, this pandemic has gone on longer the storm has gone on longer than anyone expected your situation may have been gone on for 10 years that you don't tell anybody about you might lose the friendship but keep the courage you might lose the relationship but keep the courage no matter what you lose keep the courage he says to them listen I know what I saw. I know what I heard. He says, not one of you will be lost. I'm not saying it's not going to be tough. I'm not saying you're not going to lose some stuff. I'm not saying, I, I, I cannot promise that the relationship will last. I cannot, I cannot guarantee that the job will always last. I, I cannot guarantee that the friendship will always, that the business, that the ministry, I, I have no guarantees for those things. But, but what I can tell you that the Lord says, you, <laughs> you will not be lost in the midst of all of it. No matter what you lose, keep your courage because he says, God has graciously given me all who sail with me. It is so important who you sail with. I want to speak to somebody. Life is a ship. Your friendship, your relationship. Be careful. Companionship. Be careful who is in your ship. If you make a mistake and put the right person in your ship, let me tell you something. One can put a thousand, but two can put ten thousand. He says, God has graciously given me all who sail with me. Whether you are righteous or unrighteous, whether you like me or you don't, the fact that you're in the ship with me, I know that nothing can happen to that plane. They must know that there is somebody sitting here whom God has graciously given a purpose, a destiny in a life. Don't leave the ship. Stay with the ship. The soldiers wanted to leave. They wanted to jump overboard. Some, some, some of the staff in the in the in the ship wanted to leave. And he said, Don't don't dare try to go in that rowboat. Don't dare try to go in that paddleboard. Stay with the ship. Somebody, I came to tell somebody, you might be tempted to jump ship. Don't do this just yet. Don't run away just yet stay with the ship because there is grace in that relationship he says god has graciously given me the ship the the ship can might be destroyed but it can be replaced <laughs> the ship can be replaced i know you lost a lot of stuff during this time but stuff can be replaced god spared their life and then he they ordered them. They said, okay, the ship is going to be destroyed. We can't, we can't be stuck with things that are no longer. So this ship is going to be destroyed. But God has graciously given us all safety. He, and they ordered, they said, those who can swim, jump overboard. There's a difference between jumping and being thrown. Just because I'm in the water doesn't mean that it was not my choice. Just because I'm in the water doesn't mean that somebody pushed me. Doesn't mean that I was thrown overboard. Don't judge me by how you meet me. My condition, how you meet me in the storm, is not indication of my final destination. Don't judge me just because you met me in a storm. You have no idea what God is taking me to. He said, those that can swim, jump. Others, he says, were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. That means they're still connected. 
Connection is important. Divine connection is important. He says, I don't know how you're going to get there, but get there. It says, it says others were to get there. And the title of my message today is get there. Get there, get there. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care how you get there. Just get there. It, it doesn't matter if you have to swim. Get there. It doesn't matter if you... I don't care if you do the backstroke. Get there. I don't care if you can do the butterfly. Get there. I don't care if all you're doing is, is holding on to the word of God. Uh, get there. I don't care if you're holding on to pieces. Get there. I don't care if you're holding on... You know, the storm goes so long. And, and if it's not for the fact that God said... I'm holding on to that word. I'm holding on to that prophecy. I'm holding on to that testimony that I heard so long ago. People think I'm not going to make it. I know the storm looks crazy right now, but I'm holding on to God's faithfulness. God is a covenant keeping God. He's able to keep his covenant with me and keep his part and keep my part even when I'm weak. His strength is made perfect in weakness. And I came to tell somebody, it doesn't matter if you have to float, get there. It doesn't matter if you have to get there on broken pieces, get there. Get there. Tell somebody, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. No matter what happens in this pandemic, you're going to get there. No matter how long this thing lasts, I'm going to get there. A thousand may fall at my right side and 10,000 at my left. But as for me and my house, we are going to get there. Tell somebody, somebody say, get there. By any means, any means necessary. Get there. Just because you lose the ship doesn't mean you have to lose you. It says, not a single... Hair on your head will be lost. The ship might not make it, but get there. The grain might not make it, but get there. <laughs> the relationship might not make it, but get there. You will survive the storm. Last year, uh, when COVID began, I said to my friends, this is how you're going to make it. People were thinking, you know, in this period, I must get ahead and, you know, I must butterfly my way through life and I must breaststroke my way through this situation. I must make money in this pandemic. I must do this, I must do that. And I said, my five year plan is to survive this year because I don't care what grand scheme of things you concoct. If you're not there in the end, it's pointless. And so I wanna say to somebody, get there. Don't worry about how you get there. Doesn't matter if you have to go via and then take the ship and then catch a connecting flight and then catch the bus and then go by the train. There's no prize for getting there in first class. Every one of us in that plane arrived at the airport. All of us. And when we arrived, nobody cared who was in economy. Nobody cared who was in coach, who was in business, who was in first class, who was sitting near the toilet, who was near the pilot. At that point, the only thing that mattered is that we got there. And in this season, I want you to focus that no matter what happened, your current condition is not your final destination. No matter what is going on, don't worry about the situation right now. Focus on getting there. Focus on getting to the promise that God has for you. The Bible says no child has overtaken you except which is common to man. And God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? That means you are capable of surviving the storm. You are capable. His grace is sufficient for the situation that you find yourself in. You are able you don't know what you are able to do until you have to do it and i came to tell you you are able to do it his grace has abounded in you he says with temptation i will make a way of escape so that you will be able to endure and the bible says that all 276 of them reached land safely it doesn't say the soldiers it doesn't say the pastors. It doesn't say the deacons. It doesn't say the ministers, the worship leader, the elders, the prisoner, the prostitute. All. Every single one. Because God says, it is my desire that not even one of you should perish. And anybody that is connected to you is connected to the grace of God. God's grace is sufficient for your entire household. 
No matter what situation you find yourself in right now, no matter what condition anyone connected to you finds themselves in right now, I decree and declare and speak blessing over your family, blessing over your home, blessing over your business, blessing over your place of work, blessing over your finances, blessing over your health. Everyone and everything connected to you receive divine blessing in the name of Jesus. Let the blessing overflow let a cup of blessing overflow from one member to another from one generation to another cover every single one in the ship cover every single one in the home cover every single one whether they're living right or not we do not qualify them for the blessing they are qualified on the condition just by the fact that they are connected to you everyone and everything connected to you we bless right now in Jesus' mighty name, let the oil, let the blessing, let the anointing, let the protection overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, oh, 276 of them reached land safely. I decree and declare that in this season, no matter what you lose, no matter what leaves your life, don't worry about the grain. Don't worry about the tackle. Don't worry about the cargo. No matter what has been lost, God is able to restore. He is able to restore it in abundance. He is able to make restoration and restitution so that you even forget that it was ever lost. I pray that everything that you lose in the storm, that God will bring it back to you. Press down, shaken together and running over. No matter what you lost, I want you to know that you will not be lost in the midst of the storm. The Bible says that Paul went on to preach the gospel, to teach the word of God, and to heal those who were sick. Can you imagine? From facing death to saving people from eternal death. Can you imagine such a great turnaround? Because the hand of the Lord was upon him. The Lord said, He's not done with you yet. Don't let the storm deceive you. Don't let trouble fool you. Storms are part of sailing. For you to go anywhere significant, you may encounter some storms along the way. Trouble is not unique to you. Pain is not unique to you. But no matter what, through it all, God will be with you. Things may fall apart, but you don't have to. Keep up your courage and get there. No matter what, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for the word that you have spoken to us today. Thank you, Lord, that when the winds are against us, you are not. Thank you that when the storms are raging violently, that you lift up a standard against it, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that no weapon that is formed against us, even though it has formed, we thank you that it shall not prosper. We thank you that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we can ask hope and imagine. Our faith is not in our situation. We are not walking by sight. We are walking by faith. We are going blind in the storm because we know that even when we cannot see past the storm, when we cannot see past the wind, when everything around us is falling apart, we know that you are the God who holds us in the palm of your hands. And so, Lord, for every person that is under the sound of my voice, I thank you. I thank you for your divine protection. I thank you that no disease will overtake them. I thank you that no loss will overtake them. I thank you that no destruction, no plan of the enemy, no attack will overtake them. No matter what their past, you are gracious to forgive. You are quick to forgive and slow to anger. I thank you, Lord, that we are forgiven, that we are healed, that we are restored, and that you, Lord, you're going to have all the glory because we will get there. And when we get there, we will give you the praise. We will let everyone know that this was the work of Almighty God. We thank you for it. We thank you for what you have done. We
We thank you for what you are now doing and we thank you for what you are yet to do. And everybody under the sound of my voice and everyone that is connected to them, we thank you that you have graciously given us life and life abundantly. And we give you praise and honor in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for giving me the privilege to speak into your life today. And remember, God is for you and you will indeed get there. God bless you. If you were impacted by today's message, we would love to hear from you. Maybe today's sermon was exactly what you needed to hear. Or you prayed the prayer of salvation for the first time. If so, we would love to send you some information to help you kickstart your relationship with God. Or if you want more information on how to join our virtual family, email us at info at weareconverged.com. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so online safely and securely at www.weareconverged.com slash give. You can also text 77977, type in Converge Give and the dollar amount. You can also find all of this information on our mobile app. Simply open your app or Play Store, search Converge Church Plano and download the app. It's that easy. Thank you again for joining us for today's worship experience. We look forward to staying connected with you.